Hey guys, welcome back to the Halicrafters T-54 restoration project. When we left uh, off in the first part, I had taken an initial look at the chassis, and then I went and did my homework and reviewed other folks' restoration projects that are online, looked at the service info, both Riders and Sam's, looked at what I had, and ordered up some parts. I've started doing work with parts I do have on hand, namely replacing the paper caps and resistors that are out of spec. The oddball high voltage caps, I found a few sources, I'll talk about them more when they get here. I found some on eBay, I got some from Mauser. I will say this, they're getting harder and harder to find, so whenever you see somebody selling, in particular, ASC film type high voltage caps, these kind of guys are made by uh, SHV. Buy them. <laughs> now and then, I probably folks experimenting with high voltage circuits, Jacobs ladders, Tesla coils, who knows. They post them uh, for sale, used or sometimes new. The sources are drying up. So, well, good luck if you need to locate some. All right, what I really want to talk about right now, though, is resistors. It's crazy how bad they are in this set. I pulled out my HP multimeter so we can really get a nice look at how bad they are. Here are a bunch I've already clipped out. These came from the high voltage bleeder divider string. The high voltage power supply generates around 5,000 volts. It's divided down with resistors to feed various circuits, like the Focus, for example, which doesn't need quite that much voltage. All right, so this is supposed to be a 3.9 meg, right? Let's see what it measures. About 4.6, bad, but not horrific. But we'll keep going, this should be a 3.3. It's 15. So, <laughs> that's got to go. Now, this should be a 4.7, 5.4, and so on and so on. So I've been going through and replacing a lot of these. <laughs> I'm going to end up maybe replacing half or more of the resistors, I suspect. This should be a 100 ohm. This was in the uh, AGC circuit, 146. So it's 46% higher than it should be. This should be 470. It's 640. And so on and so on. So I'm going to end up replacing a lot of these resistors. Especially the ones in this high voltage divider. Which is on this little special board here. I'm using Vichy VR37 resistors. They're good for 3,500 volts across them. This guy should be 3.3, and it is a whopping 26 mega ohms. Yeah, I've noticed that in these sets, the high voltage tends to do weird things to these resistors over time. I have seen them measure completely open, yet the set will kind of work. I think what happens is when these are in operation, there's a thousand plus volts across some of these. It sort of migrates its way, burns tracks through the carbon. So under full operating or exceeding operating voltage, they start conducting. I think these are only one watt resistors, which means they have a maximum voltage. It should be across them of 500 volts. If they're two watt, 750. I'm sure there's more than 500 volts across some of these because there's only about eight resistors in the divider string. And there's around 5,000 volts total. So you can do the math. And some of them are gonna have, or definitely be exceeding the rating. Uh, here's another little fun tidbit. If you remember, there was a warning on the chassis. Do not operate with the 6AL5 tube removed. 6AL5 is here. There's a big old 2 watt, 120 ohm resistor right across the filaments. Filament for that tube. Well, what's going on? Well, it turns out there's a weird property with a 6AL5, which is a dual diode typically used for a detector video detector 
in this case I think they use it for sound. If you run it really lean, it has better characteristics. So that's what they're doing. This 120 ohm resistor is in parallel with the filament and it's shunting some of the current away from it so the tube is being starved of power to run leaner. If the tube is out of the circuit, this resistor will complete the filament path and it still will conduct through the other tubes but it's going to be way off and probably this resistor will burn up. Either that or it's going to put too much current through the other tubes. Or actually no, I would think it would starve the current of the other, from the other tubes. I think what would happen is this would burn up. In fact, maybe that already happened because this is a replacement. So uh, that, that is why that warning was on there. I've seen that especially in communication gear and Halicrafters being a communications receiver, ham, radio kind of company. I'm sure they knew what they were doing with that. Another weirdness in this set is they use a 6H6 for the video detector. I think it's right up here. Which is also a dual diode, but that's old school. Uh, it's, it's a weird little metal octal tube. Typically a 6A05 is what they would use in these sets. I don't know that I've ever seen a 6H6 use as a video detector. So this guy, and they're only using half of it. It has slightly different characteristics than a 6AL5, but that is just standard in 99% of TVs out there. The 6AL5 for the detector, or even a germanium diode, but, um, which came out in around 47 or so. All right, so I'm going to keep on with replacing the plastic film caps. Oh, yeah, another. Uh, so when I first when I posted the first installment, one of you asked me if I could post photos in the horizontal area and saying that hey his set didn't match the Sam's I took a brief look and thought oh my mind matches the Sam's pretty well no it does not no it does not not in a horizontal circuit not in this area it's quite a bit different I see his point so I did take a bunch of photos and posted them on my Flickr page I'll include a link in the description it's weird I tried very hard to just replace what I saw with the same value Again, these resistors are all horribly out of spec, so I ended up replacing a lot of them. All these reddish-brown ones are new resistors. And there's some odd stuff, like down here. Let me get this screen. Those, there are two things in parallel. I think they're capacitors. They don't match the schematic. The schematic shows a trimmer capacitor in this area, actually, for a uh, horizontal linearity adjustment. Very similar to the MEC electrostatic set I did a while ago. So I'm trying to be really careful not to mess with this, because I think this is original, and I don't, I'm working kind of blind on this. Time for a little progress update. Uh, let's see. Sprayed some deoxit in the switch assembly, and that uh, is working pretty darn well now. I've been spending a lot of time on this area, the high voltage bleeder network, and some of the deflection caps also secure at this point. Also, it seems like a bit of work was done here, and I think I, I know why. So right on the other side of this is the high voltage generator, and there are several connections that come through a hole in the chassis. Several wires here, and yeah, I think uh, a couple more on the other side of this board. They go up into that box that has the RF high voltage generator in it. And I can see that they've been disconnected and reconnected. Also, the wiring on these controls looks really miserable and strange. It doesn't match the other wiring, so I think somebody was doing work in this area as well. So, there's a little tedious but luckily this matched the schematic so I was able to clip out all the old crusty bad carbon cops and been putting in new ones. Uh, I am kicking myself a little bit though because I don't have one of the right values. 3.9 meg I needed two of them I only had one so I just temporarily tacked a 3.3 meg in here. I'm really kicking myself because I ordered a bunch of parts for this set but I didn't order any of these so 
<laughs> so point out to place another order to complete this properly. Uh, I don't know if this is original or not, but that's how this one was wired. This is a filter cap for the high voltage supply. The SAM shows it a couple, they show two 200 picofarad caps down in this area. But I found a single 1000 picofarad cap attached in this area. Both a couple lugs on this side and a couple on that side. Go right up to a wire to the RF generator. That's the highest voltage potential right there. So this is a filter cap for the high voltage supply. So it just goes from that lug to ground. Seems like a reasonable place to put it. And then there will be two caps down here. Schematic calls for 500 again. But I'm using 1,000 because that's what all these sets typically use. All these electrostatic sets. And then it's a, for the horizontal deflection coupling. They have a couple lugs down here conveniently placed that go up to the lugs up here, so the other one will mount over on this side. So a couple more resistors to replace go into these controls. These are centering controls, and focus control, and then redo this crumbly wiring. And then I think I will disconnect all the wires and pull the high voltage box. So why do I think somebody was working and running there? Well, I don't think I mentioned this. Uh, these sets have a notorious problem. And that is, as they warm up, as they've been running a little while, the high voltage fades. Various theories as to why uh, the, the type of form material they use for the high voltage coil, or it absorbs moisture, some people have baked it out and resealed it with some type of shellac or lacquer, and that seemed to help. Other people put a fan in there. Now, if you recall, the cover was missing from the high voltage box. So I think somebody took that cover off and tinkered around down here to try to solve that high voltage fade and also took the box out entirely and disconnected these. So I'm curious to see, did they do anything? Did they recap it? Did they change parts values? Did they muck around with it trying to improve it? Now, I did a 506 a few years ago, and I was warned about that problem at the time. It didn't seem to really be an issue. And uh, the experience seems to vary from person to person as to what they find when they work on these. I'm inclined to not monkey with it. I don't want to install a fan. Uh, the high voltage generator is supposed to be in a sealed box for shielding purposes. There's no shield on the CRT, if you recall. And that R RF high voltage generator kicks out a lot of noise. So in order for a fan to do anything, you need to make some vent holes or leave the cover off and have it blow down or, or do something. And I don't want to alter that much. And I don't think the owner of the set's going to be watching full-length movies on this by any means, so we will address that situation later if we need to once it's been fully restored. Uh, uh, something else. Um, so I mentioned this is a hot chassis set with one side of the chassis going right to the power line. And I mentioned that, well... They must have some insulation to protect it because it's on a metal cabinet, metal chassis. Once I go into the AC line, that seems like a problem. This is how they solved it. The right angle chassis mounts are isolated from the main body with phenolic wafers. Pretty chunky ones, 16th of an inch thick or so. So uh, those are on all four of the chassis mounts. And then if you look on the pots, they are also mounted on really thick phenolic wafers. And then they have, of course, the plastic knobs on this side. And, of course, all the knobs on the front are plastic. So that is how they achieve isolation from the user so they don't get shocked, is all the metal surfaces, including these front controls here, there's also another on a, a thick... Uh, yeah, basically, yeah, every control on the set including the tuning mechanism. Everything is mounted on phenolic to isolate it. Now, other bit of news. Parts I ordered have arrived. A rather crazy large box. I didn't order that many parts. I got a feeling this box is mostly empty. Ordered from Oser Electronics. And because of uh, the weather and whatnot, it was going to run late. I'd just done basic uh, UPS ground shipping, 
but it was delayed, so they upgraded it to overnight air. <laughs> I got my order uh, just a couple business days. So, <laughs> big box, but this is what I actually got. All right, let's take a look at what I got. So one challenge I um, had to tackle was replacing these gigantic 0 .05 6,000 volt cap. Now I'm back and look when I did one of these before, and I used a .03, and that's what the SAMS calls for. So I think that's what the originals very likely were. So one thing you can get from the major vendors these days are these Vima red box high voltage caps. I do not sell them in axial leaded form. So I got a couple 6,000 volt 0 0.033 microfarad, which I think will work fine. There's plenty of room. They will fit under here. I will just have to attach extension leads. However, right after I ordered these, I got a tip from one of my viewers about a guy on eBay selling, I think they're 0 0.03 6,000 volt axial leaded plastic film caps, three for 20 bucks. So I did order up a couple of those. They're new old stock, I think from uh, maybe 20 years old or so. They should work just fine. Depending on when those show up, I may or may not use these at least to do a power-up, but eventually I do expect I will install those. They will, they're like this, but a lot larger. Now, uh, for the rest of it, I thought I would do something a little different, a little bit fun. Change of pace, so no adapter caps, no terminal strips, I don't think, no uh, modifying radio-leaded electrolytics. I bought all axial electrolytics. They were disappearing from the market. However, there are actually some new lines out. So when you go to the major part vendors, they typically sell what's currently being used in industry. And over the years, axial leaded caps fell out of favor. Just got everything's on a circuit board these days. They want parts of my own circuit boards. However, there are some new lines like this from Vishe. So somebody's using them again for something, which is good for us. They're a little more expensive. Yeah, these were four or five bucks each, but they're good quality caps, and we have more flexibility with mounting them. Curious thing about that is it hardly goes to anything. Unless I really, really needed this voltage, but uh, at the expense of all these parts. But if you follow it over, it goes to height control, cathode on a vertical lamp, and uh, some biasing on one of the grids, and that's it. <laughs> so, that rec half of a rectifier, two big filter caps, a resistor, just for hardly anything. Well, like, it must have been an essential part of the circuit, or they wouldn't have bothered. Just about done. I made good progress in the last couple hours. Down to the last two electrolytics. I want to talk about those a bit because those are the two that are shown incorrectly in the SAMS service info. I also wanted to say that going with these axiolated caps has worked out quite well. Most of them have one end going to the chassis. And these octal tube sockets have four nice sturdy eyelets around the mounting collar that are going to the chassis. So you can mount one end of your caps to those lugs. I'll also say going with name brand caps is a good idea because not only are the specs good but they have nice sturdy thick leads so once you mount them they aren't going anywhere. So I've not needed to add any terminal strips or any special mounting or anything like that. Now these last two these are the ones that go in you might say backwards where the positive goes to the chassis. It's this guy here. It is a dual 30, 200 volts. Four wires coming out. So these cardboard types, because they don't have a common metal can, they just have a bunch of wires coming out of the end. Pay attention. Take photos. Take references before you remove them. Because they might not be the originals, and the wire color might not match your service info. At least one of these had been replaced, I noticed, while I was working on it. But this one, I believe, is the original, and I think it does match up pretty well. So, we have four wires coming out, two for each cap. 
So they are not connected internally. They're two totally separate caps. One of them is red and black. Black being negative. And if we look, red is going to a lug down here. So they have red, the positive side, going to the chassis. And black is going to a lug on this guy, which is one of the rectifier tubes, uh, 25Z6. So I'm going to clip this out and I want to pay attention to that. I want to hook it up properly where the positive is going to go to that tube socket lug and the negative is going to go to the rectifier tube. Now those are pretty close if I was mounted where the original parts are because they're going to the lug right here and then the lug on the tube right there. They're just about that far apart. If I contorted these leads, maybe, but that, that would be a little awkward. But we can look around and see what else they go to. And as I said, uh, that red goes to a, a lug that's going to the chassis. There are numerous points on the chassis where I can mount. So I'm not that concerned about that. I also left this one cap just loosely tacked in so I can easily disconnect one end and get it out of the way while I work on this. I anticipated this while I was working on this. I said, hey, there's a bunch of stuff that's connected down there. And this cap kind of goes over everything, so let's just temporarily tack that in uh, so we can work on it. The other one, let's see, the yellow, one lead is going here, the yellow, and that would be the negative. So the blue is the positive, and the blue goes to the same common lug down on the socket. So for both of my caps, the positive goes to the chassis and the negative goes to this point or to that point. Something else I've been replacing and uh, generally advise you do, power resistors. They, uh, the old ones, they tend to be kind of crusty, corrode, they get green corrosion on them and they can open up inside. And honestly, the more modern materials can handle high temperatures better. So I replaced this with this nice beefy guy. And this one's going to go top side. This is a nice sturdy wire wound resistor. It's a surge limiter on the selenium rectifier. So uh, I'm going to replace these last two caps, tack this one back in place, and then the last major thing down here. Disconnect a couple more wires, go into that high voltage box on the other side. We're going to unmount it and take a look inside. And I have to replace some of the crude wiring I saw on these controls. And then replace the selenium. And I think that will be about... Oh, no, I have one more paper cap. A sneaky one. It's hiding right underneath that big resistor across the 6AL5 filament. It's a paper cap. Around. Yeah, yeah, that'll do it. That'll do it.